Hello viewers and welcome to Pioneer of Success. Today we are introducing a new course on Raman Spectroscopy, an essential tool for molecular analysis. This course is designed with specific learning modules to enrich your ability of understanding Raman effect, analyzing and interpreting Raman spectra and applying it to your research activities of various fields, maybe material science, environmental sciences, pharmaceutical or biomedical applications. Additionally, if there are any related topics that you would like us to cover, feel free to reach out at pioneerofsuccess2020 at gmail.com. We will surely take a note of it. Now to start with, as we all know that the optical spectroscopic tools are designed to characterize the light matter interaction, wherein the interaction of the electromagnetic waves provides the insight of the molecular phenomena that happens inside any material. So what are these electromagnetic waves? In layman language, electromagnetic wave is a form of energy. Think of it like a ripples in the pond. When you drop a stone, it creates waves that spreads out. Similarly, when electric charges move, they create this form of energy that we call as the electromagnetic wave. Now uh, consider an example of sunlight. It is a form of energy. How it is generated? It is generated due to the several of nuclear fusion that occurs at the sun's core, which generates this high energy photons which travels through from the space and reaches to the earth that we termed as the sunlight. Thus, there are different types of the natural phenomena which generates different kinds of the electromagnetic waves like volcanic eruption, lightning, radioactive decay and others. Technically, electromagnetic wave means it consists of two types of waveforms that is electric field and the magnetic field. Electric field that arises from the electric charges which are the coal building block of any material and the magnetic fields which generates due to the motion of these charges. When this electric and the magnetic fields oscillate perpendicular to each other and to the direction of the wave propagation, they generate this electromagnetic wave. Now the wavelength of these oscillations determine the type of the electromagnetic wave which gives the electromagnetic spectrum like the radio waves which have the longest wavelength which may, uh, which may up to several kilometers and are basically used for the communication purposes like broadcasting radio and the television signals. Then comes the microwaves which are shorter in wavelength and are used in the radar or satellite communication as well as in the cooking as we have seen in the microwave ovens in our household. Next comes the infrared rays with wavelengths longer than the visible light but shorter than this microwaves. Infrared is associated with heat and is used in the thermal imaging and remote control applications. Then comes the visible spectrum that we termed as the light. It consists of the wavelength that wavelength from 400 to 700 nanometers that is detectable to human eyes and with and without which we could not be able to see the nature now it consists of a spectrum that we term as wave gear that ranges from violet light of the shortest wavelength of 400 nanometer and uh, up to red or the longest wavelength in the visible spectrum that is up to 800 nanometer then comes the uv rays that is ultraviolet radiation with shorter wavelength than the visible light, UV waves uh, is used in sterilization and is also used in the lithographic applications for uh, the fabrication of micro nanostructures. Then comes the X-rays. These waves have the property to penetrate soft tissues but are absorbed by the denser materials like bones and thus has finds its application for the medical imaging purposes. Then comes the shortest wavelength that is the gamma rays. It has highest energy and these are produced in nuclear reactions and are nowadays has been um, application in uh, cancer treatment and astrophysical observations. Now of all this electromagnetic spectrum we will be focusing mainly on the infrared and the visible region. Why? Because these are responsible for the molecular vibration inside any material which is the prime principle for characterizing a material in Raman spectroscopic tool. That's why Raman spectroscopy is also termed as the vibrational spectroscopy characterization tool. Now when this electromagnetic waves travels in vacuum, it uh, travels with the speed of light and its energy remains same even if it travels infinitely. 
but when it enters into any medium may it be air water metal or any other material it attenuates that is its wave the energy of the wave decreases as it propagates now this degree of attenuation depends on the frequency of the wave as well as the property of the medium to which it enters for example we know that the radio waves has the longest wavelength still it is not used in the underwater communication system why because it attenuates heavily when it interacts with water and that's why microwaves are used for the sonar and the underwater application because of its big, uh, pen high pen penetrating power with low attenuation as compared to radio waves another example if we see uh, the microwave ovens that we have in our house is consist of a casing of metal why because this metals has the property to absorb this high frequency microwaves and thus it prevents to escape out of the oven which is generated inside the oven for cooking the food and it prevents from the person who is handling the uh, microwave from getting affected now why this uh, electromagnetic wave attenuates when it enters into any material this may be because of the different phenomena which happens due to light matter um, interaction for example if we consider absorption when the light enters into any material some of the wavelength of the light may absorbed by the molecular vibration and the rest is transmitted now this the rest which is rejected out it may be in the same form that is in the form of light with different wavelength or it may have converted into some other form like heat next is the reflection this occurs when the light strikes a surface and bounces back into the same medium without penetrating the material then comes refraction as light passes from one medium to another its speed changes causing the light to bend and changes its path while traveling then comes the transmission that is the light can pass from the material continuing a path through the medium without being affected now this the material may absorb some of the light but the rest is transmitted in the form of light only then comes the scattering it is a process by which the light is redirected in different directions when it enters the material which is highly dependent on the size of the scattering particle relative to the wavelength of the light it is interacting with so this now these all phenomena does not occur explicitly when a light enters into any material all of these phenomena happen simultaneously now based on the property of the material to which the light is entering like whether it will absorb more or it will scatter more or it will transmit more the different type of characterization tools are designed to analyze those material like absorption reflection or the transmission are basically analyzed using uv visible spectroscopy where the interaction of the light let is how much of the light wavelength is absorbed by the material is studied similarly raman spectroscopic tool is used to analyze the scattering of light by any material so in this course we will be focusing only on the scattering of the light by different size of the particles as well as the uh, the molecular vibrations so based on the size of the particle scattering could be divided into three types if the size of the particle that is interacting with the incoming wavelength is much much smaller that is one tenth of the wavelength to which it is interacting say suppose we are considering visible light ranging from 400 to 800 nanometer and the particle to which interacting with is in the ranges of 40 to 70 nanometer then the particle radiates or the scatters out the light evenly in all the direction that is isotropic scattering and this type of scattering is called as the rayleigh scattering now this kind of scattering are basically done by the very small size of particles like the gas molecules or the smoke or the small aerosol and these are highly wavelength dependent that is the intensity of the scattering that is inversely to the fourth power of the wavelength that is interacting that is if we consider the wibdor spectrum the smaller size the smaller wavelength that is the vib this kind of smaller uh, wavelength of the light will be scattered more intensely intensely as compared to that of the red spectrum which are the longest in the light spectrum similarly if the size of the particle is comparable to the wavelength or is slightly 
higher in that case this kind of scattering and this kind of particles scatter the light directionally in one direction as compared to that of the other direction that is the scattering is not isotropic that is it it has a directionality that is it scatters the light in a particular direction more as compared to it scatter it in its backward direction this kind of scattering is called as the ne scattering and it was generated by small particles like water droplets larger uh, dust particles which are suspended in the atmosphere these are not wavelength dependent that is it scatters all the wavelengths of the light equally but directionally to a particular in a forward direction as compared to its backward direction now when the size of the particle is much much larger than that of the wavelength it is interacting with this kind of scattering are called as the geometric scattering here the uh, directionality of the scattering is highly dominant that is it direct it this it uh, scatters the light more prominently in, in a particular direction as compared to negligibly in its backward direction this kind of scattering are done are mainly originated from large particles like raindrops ice crystals sand grains and more so different type of phenomena that originates from the uh, geometric scattering includes the interference of light diffraction dispersion which are the phenomena which occur due to this geometric scattering by larger size of the particle when the light falls on it so there are different natural phenomena that we uh, observe around us which occurs due to this real, uh, this kind of rayleigh me or the geometric scattering let us have a look to it we have seen the blue uh, appearance of the sky during the day time it is due to the rayleigh scattering that's why we have the light are scattered more why we have seen that the smaller size a smaller a uh, smaller wavelength of the light that is the rayleigh scattering is highly dependent on the wavelength that is intensity of the wavelength is inversely proportional to the fourth power of the wavelength so if we consider the sunlight it is having a, a wavelength range from 400 to 700 so the smallest smaller wavelength of the light will be scattered more intensely as compared to that of the red red or the longer wavelength that's why we we see the Uh, we see the uh, sky to look predominantly blue when we look in the direction of the sun similarly the white appearance of the clouds the cloud appear white or gray and can have a fluffy ap appearance why this happens because the we know that the cloud are made up of tiny water droplets or the ice crystal when sunlight passes through these droplets or the crystals it scatters it in all the direction by the water molecules that is suspended in to form the uh, uh, clouds now we have seen that the mean scattering is not wavelength dependent that is it scatters all the wavelength of the light equally but in a particular more in a particular direction as compared to the backward direction so when it is, uh, scatters all the wavelength of the light equally it seems to um, to it seems that it is a white color because all the colors are is scatters equally which affects all the wavelength of the visible light this scattering causes the cloud to appear white or sometimes grayish grayish because of the density or the thickness of the cloud now if we see this crepuscular rays these are the rays of the sunlight that appears to radiate from a single point where the sun is located and usually visible during sunrise or the sun rays this is this phenomena could be categorized as the scattering of the sunlight by the larger dust particle and which is which could be seen in the me scattering this occurs due to this uh, when uh, this occurs when the sunlight uh, streams through the gaps in the clouds or between the mountain peaks the sunlight is scattered by the atmospheric particles and the dust and thus it creates the visible rays that seem to converge towards the uh, sun's position now as we can see here that we see the same color of the sunlight uh, in this rays also that is it it is due to the me scattering because it scatters all the wavelength of the sunlight equally that's why we see it in the similar in the same form as the sunlight is not appearance of the different colors so this is a form or this is due to the me scattering by the uh, dust particles
Now, if we see this atom glow, you have observed this kind of the reddish or pinkish glow on the mountains or the hills during sunrise or the sunset. This ha effect happens when the sun is below the origin and the light is scattered by the atmosphere. It is a combination of the relay and the main scattering that is um, when the sun is below the origin, it is scattering the earth atmosphere, the air molecule scatters the light, uh, scatters the sunlight do with both relay and the me form that is if we see that the in relay the intensity of the uh, intensity of the scattered light is inversely proportional to the wavelength now when it, the sun is below the origin the blue light in that case is still uh, scattered more but it is scattered out we could not see that and the uh, red wavelength because of its larger wavelength is visible to our eyes and can travel because it can travel more distance. So in such cases, the shorter blue or the green wavelengths are scattered out, leaving the larger red and the orange wavelengths to appear on these mountains, which we see them as a warm or the glowing color. This is the same reason why we see this uh, red appearance of the sky during the sunset and the sunrise that is uh, the sun is below the origin and the shorter wavelengths are scattered out and we can shoot, see only the longer wavelength that is the red or the orange color now let us take a few example of the geometric scattering that is the appearance of this parhelia or the sun dogs these are the bright spots that appear on either side of the sun this occurs due to the reflection or refraction of sunlight due to ice crystal at high altitudes the crystals, these crystals act like prisms and bending of the light at specific angles that creates the bright spots around the sun. Uh, the, the appearance of the moon ring or the halo around the moon. This is due to the refraction of the moonlight by the ice crystal at the upper atmosphere. The hexagonal shape of the crystal bends the light in such a way that it forms a ring around the moon that we see as a halo. And we are all familiar with the rainbow, the appearance of the rainbow in the uh, sky after the after any uh, after a rainy day. We see this uh, kind of rainbows with beautiful colors because of the dispersion of sunlight through raindrops, which is an effect of the geometric scattering by the larger size raindrops uh, when uh, uh, raindrops in the atmosphere as sunlight enters in a rain, uh, raindrop it is refracted internally reflected and then again reflected again as it exits this process separates the light into its constituent colors which creates this beautiful rainbow in the sky now we have seen that this uh, scattering uh, causes different type of phenomena and it is highly dependent on the size of the particle that the light is interacting with. Similarly, these are all visible to our human eyes. Now there are phenomena, molecular vibrations that are not visible to our human eyes and is also dependent by the scattering of the light, uh, scattering of the light by different types of molecular vibration that are characterized using Raman spectroscopic tool. So we will take into account the molecular vibration and its scattering in a Raman spectroscopy in the next video. Thank you.